আসসালামু আলাইকুম ওয়েলকাম টু চ্যানেল এস এস আইকনিক প্রোগ্রাম ফ্রেন্ডস অফ বাংলাদেশি ইচ টাইম উই ইনভাইট এ ভেরি স্পেশাল গেস্ট অ্যান্ড টুডে ইজ নো এক্সেপশন বিফোর আই ইন্ট্রোডিউস আওয়ার গেস্ট লেটস গো এন সি এ ভিডিও ক্লিপ Dr. Sue Lloyd Williams was born in Chesterfield, Derbyshire in 1954. She moved to London in 1975 after her graduation in science from Cambridge University and in 1981 completed her PhD again in science from Imperial College. She learned Siliti and Bangla even completing a Bengali GCSE. Together with her husband and their friend Mathieu Rahman Chaudhary, they formed Siliti Translation and Research known as STAR in 1997. Passionate about the importance of world's language and cultures, Sue strives to try and reconnect Siliti with the historical literature for which she feels that the Nagari script is key. Through her work with Star, Sue has had a part in commissioning the transcribing of many Siliti radio and video dramas and the typing up of Nagari putis onto computer. This enabled her to compile a dictionary of modern Siliti to Bangla and English as well as a dictionary of words found in the old putti literature and hopes to publish these soon. Additionally, she has compiled a Nagri alphabet book and the book Siliti Te Lakhar Pora, through which many people have learned to read and write the Nagri script. It's time to introduce our guest. And the lady is Dr. Sue Lloyd Williams. Welcome to Channel S. Thank you. Tell us briefly about your parents. Well, I grew up in uh, what I always thought was the East Midlands uh, part of, of England. Uh, nowadays, living in London, people okay. call it the North. Okay. Um, but it is um, East Bolso Midlands. East okay. Midlands. It bowls over in Derbyshire. Bolsover. And um, there were, I think, almost no um, people other than um, local white British people. It was a mining area. Mm. And um, I did not have any contact at all with people. So you were born there? I was born there. Okay. You used to uh, read a lot when you were young? Yes, I, I did read a lot. And um, I was always interested in uh, mainly novels, but writers who wrote from or about the East. Um, so I was very interested in, in India, Asia. mainly India, India. And, and places like that, yes. And your one of your hobby was calligraphy? I, I had a, a very strong calligraphy um, hobby, right. yes. I, I used to write all kinds of things um, if people needed um, small um, illustrative books writing about something, then I would write in, um, I hoped, nice handwriting. Yes. Yeah, those days handwriting was very important. Yes. Now the children cannot write properly. <laughs> it's all computers. So you are a young education in Derbyshire, yeah. and then you went to Cambridge? Yes, uh, actually my secondary education was just over the border in Nottinghamshire, but I, after that I went to Cambridge University. And then after your Cambridge education, you moved to East London? Yes. Did you meet uh, many Bengali Silati people in East London? Oh yes, um, very much so. Um, I was there, um, I was doing a PhD in, at um, Imperial College, but I was living in the Sileti area for the same reason that many Sileti people were living there because mm -hmm. the accommodation was reasonably cheap. Mm -hmm. And um, so yes, I met many of them. And you made many friends? Yes. Which year was that? 1976. I finished my PhD, I think it was 1981. 81. Now the interesting subject. When did you meet James, well, your beloved husband? During that time, um, I met him. Um, he was living in exactly the same area, I think, because he had moved also to that area mm. for the Bangladeshi community um, because he spoke Bengali. Um, and we just happened to be in the same area. Same area. We were part of the same um, church. We 
met each other there. And so the bond was created in the in a silly area. Yeah? It was in, yes. in England. In England, yes. And when did you get married? Uh, 1978. Children. Um, I have two daughters. They're now grown up. Um, the eldest is married and um, living in India. She married an Indian, actually. Okay. When did you first visit uh, Bangladesh? It, it was very soon after we uh, were married. James was very keen that he should show me where he grew up. Um, we went to India, but he also wanted to go over the border to Bangladesh because he... Because James was born in India. In His Calcutta. father was working in India. Yes. And he came to Bengal as well. Yes. yes? He, he uh, was born in Calcutta. Calcutta. His father okay. was working in a bank there. So you stayed in Silet in Maulubi Bazaar? For yes. A while? Uh, we, um, we went, uh, we, we flew to Bombay, went right across India to Calcutta and um, over the land border into uh, Bangladesh at, that po at Kulna um, district and then moved up in uh, Bangladesh. So I saw, we, we wanted to see the whole country, whole really. Whole country. So but that's... But you ended up in Silhet. Yes. Because of the Silhet connection created yes. from East London. Yes. Yes? Yes. When did you start um, visiting Silhet on a regular basis? I can't exactly remember the date, but um, when my children were young, James would visit. I didn't go at all. And I think the first time I went was after my youngest daughter started university. Mm -hmm. And um, so you started, James already could speak Bengali. Yes. Or Sileti, or even Nagri, understand Nagri. But now an interest grew and you started learning yes. uh, the language, yeah? We did begin learning Sileti together because mm -hmm. he knew good Bangla. Uh, but um, the Saleti people at that time, um, and there was no Bangla television, and many of them came from village areas yes. without a lot of formal education. So um, many of them would say, oh yes, your Bangla is beautiful, but they couldn't really quite understand. So both of us together were trying to learn some Saleti. And um, you took GCSE in Bengali? Eventually I did. When my children were um, were growing up, I thought, I really need to have a little bit more instruction. Up to that point, I just learnt from James. We, we did a little reading together or I tried to speak with him. You started teaching English to the Bengali ladies yes. who came from rural areas. Yes. 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 So how did you get on, how, you know, interaction wise? Well, it was um, it was very interesting. Um, I think that my uh, life experiences were very different to them. I'd been a, um, a science graduate and um, it, they had mainly been um, brought up in village areas and um, they had their children. When I had my children, then immediately everyone has something to say because sure. the same sort of... Sure. So at that point, we began to get on extremely well. Right. Let's talk about Nagri language, a very important language for Silletis. When did you find out Sileti had its own unique alphabet? Nagri is not a language, it is a script, it's a, script. a writing. The language is Sileti. Sileti. But um, we found, James found that out. He went to Silet and saw a book. He bought a book in a book in a library, which was in Nagri mm -hmm. writing. It, the book was Halatun Nobi. Ha and Halatun Nobi. very, very popular book. And he wanted to find out how to understand that. There were no books. Everybody said, oh, no, 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 no. Sileti has never been written down. And then um, one of our friends in East London, an elderly lady, um, we went to her house and as often happens, she would serve us with tea and say, I'm sorry, I need to pray. Fine. So we sat while she prayed. And after she prayed, we heard her speaking aloud 
sort of very melodically speaking aloud. And so when we came, when she came back, we said, "What, um, what were you doing?" You know, mm -hmm. this normally people pray silently. So, and she said, "Well, I, this is what I was reading," and she produced this book, Halatun Nobi. Halatun Nobi. But it was in Bangla script. Oh, okay. And she said, "I read a little of this every day." And right. so we said, would, would, would she mind if we borrowed it? We photocopied it and returned it to her. From that, comparing it with the Nagari version, James learnt how to read the Nagari. Oh, that's a fantastic information, you know, and the inspiration you got. We'll continue our discussion after a short break. Viewers, we'll be back soon. Stay with us. Welcome back. We were discussing about Nagri language. The, you started taking more interest in Nagri now. And, yes. And you started reading and writing Nagri? First of all, um, James um, said, um, we need to have some way of typing this Nagari, right. because already for my own language learning, I was compiling a word list which has grown into I hope a dictionary. Um, I hope it will be printing that soon. Soon. Sure. Um, so we needed to have some way of writing Saleti down to study the language for um, the grammar and, as I say, dictionary. We just didn't know quite what to do. James said, right, we need a computer font, a digital font. Tell us about STAR, the Saleti translation and research. At that time, we started um, getting uh, Nagari scripts from people, um, collecting them, looking out for them. We don't actually own any of them, but we have photocopies or photographs. Mm. And at that time, we needed some help, really. So um, uh, Mr. Motya Rahman Chowdhury came and um, assisted us. So he would look at these and the 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 putties that we were looking at, the yeah, the, putti. the putties, yeah. some of the words are quite old words and there are many Arabic and Persian words even more than in modern Sileti, mm -hmm. which itself has more the, um, Arabic and Persian than Bangla. We had a little help from him in, in doing that and um, yes, we started thinking Everybody brings these books. They say, oh yes, my grandmother used to read them or something. It was often ladies who, who read Nagari. Okay. I think because at the time when Nagari was common, um, the men folk in the professions, the legal profession and so on, were, um, were doing their work in Persian, actually. Okay. So that Farsi. was Farsi. That was the main professional language, professional language. Uh, but the ladies were using Nagri. Nagri. So you went to a workshop? Yes, you? my husband In said, yes, my mm -hmm. husband said we want a digital font and I said I don't know how to do this but we found people who could help us and yes I went to a workshop and when they saw that we had these photographs of all these letters and pages of putties, they said, well, could we use that as the um, the example to, to uh, build this workshop on, to teach people how to make digital fonts? Mm -hmm. Other people were looking for other languages, not, not Sileti. So we came out of that workshop with a working digital font. And later on, you uh, improved the font? Yes. Uh, later on, we um, it, it was a little rough because in two weeks, which is the length of the workshop, you can't you can't do all the 
beautiful work. work yeah. the, the, the font was working, but the actual images were a little Did rough. you spend a lot of time um, doing this? I think it took the best part of a year, although that was a year of me working when I was taking my children to school mm. and back and so on, so it wasn't a full-time year. Once you developed, did it interest grow within the Silerty people? Yes, um, there was a... Um, soon after we, we had the uh, final font, um, there was a, 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 one of the Mellors in, held in Brick Lane, actually, and we thought, well, we should just show this and see if anybody's interested. So I produced um, very quickly an alphabet book and we printed it off and duplicated it and we sold that to people at the Mella and people okay. were so interested. It was really amazing. Unicode is in Shtakita. I don't know whether you remember trying to type in Bangla yes. before Unicode, but yes. you had to have the right um, software, you had to have the right font, and if you tried using one sort of software with another font, it you got rubbish. Um, and it was very difficult, and things didn't work very well. Unicode uh, means that on the uh, computer, the Windows or Android nowadays on phone, phones or even the Apple software, um, if you want to use any language, you have a dedicated keyboard manager mm -hmm. to, so that you can type it and font, and it can't get confused with any other language. Right. Um, so we felt this is what we needed for, sure, for Nagari. Sure. So, I've never heard of the Nagri Basha Tari by Purbo, Siloti, Nagri by Purbo. That's why I'm not interested in the growth of the Manchu Mazenani. Um, a bosho, um, uh, Kichu, um, Oshubida as Asil, our Okono as Ase, Karon, um, Windows, our Android, Tara Fura, um, use Korena. Um, uh, um, Unicode Nagari. So, so on Windows, if you use WordPad, you can type in Nagari, but not in Word. And so are you working on that? We, well, we can't do anything. And the same with Android phones. There are now apps which we haven't produced, but there are apps which allow you to type on your phone in um, Roman characters, English letters, and they produce a picture in Nagari. Um, it's very cumbersome, mm. but we can't do anything. It is down to Android and um, But if Microsoft. there are, they get, they are under more pressure, I think they will... Yes, the, we, we hope that um, uh, we're very pleased to find that um, there are now republishing of the old putties. Um, there is um, in Silet Town. There is the new uh, Nagri Chotto, no, no, and the Chotto. there are um, Facebook groups, WhatsApp groups using Nagri. And we're hoping that the computer people will take sit up and take note. People are using this script. Right. And so tell us more about uh, the alphabet book. As I said, it was done very quickly, and. Um, quickly went through, um, it sold out, and each, um, I think there were about seven different editions done mm -hmm. fairly soon after that, because each time it was improved a little more. Right. But it, it's very simple. It's, um, many people have really enjoyed it, and although we did come out later with a book, Learn to Read and Write, Siloti Nagari, mm -hmm. um, in many cases, people learn to read and write Siloti Nagri just through the alphabet book, um, because we have the equivalents in Bangla, um, Lippi, and in uh, Roman uh, So English. what is your opinion? Um, how can we get more people interested in the language and preserving the language? I think that um, our 
concern, I, I have two concerns actually. One is historical and one is current. The historical one is that um, the old putties um, are dying out. The climate in Bangladesh is not kind to paper. And um, many people are, are finding that the insects eat them or the flood comes and they get ruined. So they should be preserved for people because it is the heritage of Sileti people. It is sure. a lot of their history so is in now, there. Now you go and live in Silet half of the time yes. and you have a rented house there. Where we you, do. In, 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 in one Sillet part of town. Sillet town. Yes. Do people take you as a Sileti person or, a, you know, are they hospitable? Oh, very hospitable. That is one thing that um, there's no doubt that they're very hospitable, very friendly people. I, I don't look like a Sileti lady. Um, I do wear um, a salwar kameez when I'm there. Um, largely, be well, it's very comfortable, but also um, out of respect, really. This is, I don't want to cause any offence by wearing Western clothes. But do you go out shopping? Yes, yes. Getting vegetables and fish yes. and all this? Yes. Do you know how to bargain? I think I'm less good at bargaining mm. than... <laughs> okay. And uh, do you cook? Yes, I do cook, although there is a, a lady who cooks. And certainly if we have Sileti guests coming, I ask her to cook because right. she's definitely better than I am. And you mostly vegetarian, isn't it? We're not totally vegetarian, no. Um, and oddly enough, in, in Bangladesh, I think people seem to eat meat possibly more oh. uh, than, than, than in Britain. Have you actually. adjusted with the weather? That is always a bit of a problem. The hot weather, especially the humidity, I do find difficult. Not mm. so much now, but when I first, first came. Went. It's been fantastic talking to you and we have learned a lot. Um, our viewers and the community, they did not know about your activities. I want to thank you for coming to the studio. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Um, you're very kind and it was much easier than I thought it might have been, so thank you. Uh, viewers, we were having a very interesting discussion about the Siloti Nagri language. Um, we did not know about the work Sue and her husband has been doing. And they also live half of the year in Silet, mixing with people and they love the culture and the language of Nagri. Next time we'll bring another guest on this program. Stay tuned with Channel S. Thank you. Mm -hmm.